So, <laughs> never let someone who has troubles with directions go out in the woods. <laughs> Several things in this video I want to talk about, and it seems like it's going to go everywhere, I'm sure, but there is a, a lot of problems with this, what I'm getting ready to talk about. So, as you know, Carol and I were nomads. Nomads mean you traveled. You stayed in a spot for the number of days allowed you to stay there and then you move to the next spot that's nomadic that's what nomads do they move around well most places was two weeks and we always stayed the the amount of time we were allowed to stay in the national forest now national forest is owned by the public there are a lot of people who assume the that it's their property they can do whatever they want with it a lot of these nomad channels imply that you can get away with a lot more than two weeks we saw it all the time people would have been there for months and months and months and months I remember we were at Virginia Hawk campground and we stayed in one spot for two weeks and there was a guy there in a van who was there before we got there and then we were allowed to move down the road a ways. That, that was part of the deal. You could move to this other area. So, but we were still within walking distance of the original campsite. So the, the original spot was an actual campsite with outhouses and camp spots where you could park your camper. The other spot was just kind of out in the woods a little bit. So we stayed there for two weeks. Well, then we were gonna go down towards uh, South Carolina, but there was a hurricane coming. So we asked the guy if we could stay there another two weeks until the hurricane cleared, because that was supposed to come up the east. And he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. They understood. So we stayed there, I guess, six weeks, but with permission, in the, and we followed the rules. But that one van guy, even said when we were leaving well, there's no reason for you to leave they ain't gonna make you move and he was there after we left and there was this mentality that he owned the forest then you go over to the west and it's terrible out in the west it's they just hog the areas and it's quite obvious in the youtube videos people don't move and the thing is is they get out there and the desert's so hot and then they end up getting stranded most of them are not very rich they don't have a lot of money or what do you want to call it so they run out of gas and so they're stuck out in the desert 110 degree heat no water and i actually had a facebook friend facebook friends that's what they call it friends and he died from heat and then another one died out there but with cancer he had cancer went out there ended up getting so immobilized that he couldn't get out of there and he died in the desert and i tried to discourage this behavior when i was out there but carolyn and i knew it, it wasn't going to last much longer i'm sure people are still doing it but you always heard of more restrictions and more bans and they wouldn't let you stay at this campground and heck some of the campgrounds we stayed at are now closed it just got out of hand the youtube community destroyed it now while we were out there there was two times that we got lost in the woods uh, one time I got lost by myself and another time Carolyn and I both got lost and I don't know what you really define as lost my definition is if you need help getting out of there you're lost you, you lost your own senses so while we were in Kentucky there was an actual trail it's not like we ever got off trail there was an actual trail that we were walking to get to this little cave thing that they advertised on the trail. Well, we got to the cave and did our videos and took our pictures and then the trail continued on. But the more we went, the more the trail narrowed and it was less defined. Eventually, it just wasn't there anymore. We were trying to figure out where the trail ended up at. We thought it was supposed to circle all the way around. I was pretty convinced that we must have gotten off trail somehow or another. But I always took my phone. And so you could turn on the, the GPS and you could find where you're at. If you got the picture small enough, you could say, oh, so you always started out with the phone. 
uh, with a mental note of what the area looked like that you were leaving. That way if you got lost, you could always get back to that spot. That one went too bad. I mean, it was only a few minutes before we found the trail again, was able to get back on our way. We're limited on water and it's terrifying. I've been telling you how much has rained around here and I haven't been out in the woods since it flooded that last time, but it's just, it piled stuff up like a creek. This is my trail. This is the one I cut for our property. And then another time I was in New Mexico. In New Mexico, I had to be careful. Well, anywhere I had to be careful. I made YouTube videos and I did these walking around videos like I did this one. I was making a video and I got turned around somehow. I mean, I don't know how, but I did. So I thought I knew where I was going. So I just turned around and started heading back to where I thought I was coming from. And before long, I realized this is taking a lot longer to get back than I, it should. You figure my video is X minutes long. So I should be able to walk, let's say 15 minutes that direction, turn around, come back 15 minutes. And I didn't. So I got my phone out and I quickly realized that I just walked too far. I was supposed to kind of go, let's say, I'm just using this as a, an example. I was supposed to go in a north east pattern and I ended up just going north. I didn't get the eastern at all. So I just kind of passed up my, my spot. It was easy to get back, but it was a lot of walking because I really walked out of the way. But you always got to be mindful that you're going to get lost and you got to be careful that you know, have somebody knows where you're at or at least the approximate location of where you're at. I always left Carolyn at the camper when I did my videos in case something happened to me she could come and get me and we always walked in pairs I don't know if that was good or bad but if I broke my ankle for example she should be able to get back but Carolyn gets lost in the woods pretty easy she has a problem with directions and it's an actual disability lots of people have it uh, directional dyslexia so she can get turned around pretty easy if she doesn't mark her spots and I mean she can literally walk one direction and think okay I've turned around and continue walking the same direction she was walking so I always got to be careful with her and when she would go out in the woods by herself for whatever reason before she decided to come back she would holler out hey Rob and then I could say I'm right over here and she could come right back so we always worked and realized our handicaps and our disabilities and tried to get through it but a lot of people go out in the national forest and call themselves off-grid and it's not it's not off-grid first of all there's just too many rules so in order to get off-grid in the national forest you got to go way back in the national forest like I did in New Mexico I walked way too far and it would have been really hard for people to find me I mean I guess if they had a helicopter they'd have found me pretty easy but it just put out a search party they probably wouldn't have found me but if I'm in a forest like this a helicopter isn't gonna find me either but people go out there and they have no survival skills which is a major mistake this is why you should be nomadic you travel don't get out there and say well I'm gonna stay out there I just watched a YouTube video of another off-grid guy and I'm, everybody probably knows who he is I just don't mention names and he made a video about this family who went out to the forest in, in Colorado and I did read the article so I appreciate the youtuber for giving me this idea that they went up into the Colorado some national forest in Colorado because they were afraid of what was happening in society and they brought some canned goods but no car they had a tent and they got stuck in the winter they, they went out there without a plan and if they had a plan it was a really bad plan and they never test their skills they never check to see if they could handle cold weather or how they're going to keep warm in cold weather could they start a fire in cold weather i mean les strauss survivor man he used to make these tv shows on discovery channel way back in the early 2000s and he'd stay out there for two or three weeks and he'd he'd lost 50 pounds or so and then there's this uh, what naked and afraid show I used to watch and they would 
just go out there for what two or three weeks and they'd lose all kinds of weight and nearly on death's door many of them couldn't make it through it and had to quit this family decides they're going to go up in the national forest and they're going to be survivor man and think they're going to do a better job because they brought some canned foods well snow started flying and they couldn't keep warm the article i read hasn't made a cause of death determination just yet they speculate it could be one of three things malnutrition they were looked like they were not eating well carbon monoxide poisoning from starting a fire or they froze to death now i talk a lot about this a lot people argue with me all the time it's it's harder in the summertime than it is in the winter time you can survive winter time but more people die in the winter from cold related deaths than they do in the summer in the summer you can drink water and you'll be okay you drink enough water you'll be okay but you get out there in the cold and you can't get warmed up and you get hypothermia or you get wet which is possible you're not going to survive it end of story if you're going to live off grid you need to be ready for winter I don't think that living off grid you can do in a national forest. It's just you got to be survivor man to do it or naked and afraid to do it. The YouTuber I watched, I completely agree with, and I have said this before in my videos that if you want to live off grid, start in your own house. Shut off your electric at the breaker box. See how you do. Can you live off a couple solar panels or a generator or whatever it is you want to do? If you do, great. But if you can't, you flip the switch back on your breaker box, you got electric and everything's back to normal. And then you can assess your failure and go and try it again. And then when winter comes around, you light up your wood stove and you see if you can survive the winter in your wood stove. And if you can't for some reason, then you turn on your furnace. And this is what I did throughout my life. So I could actually do this. I learned how to put a solar panel set together back in the early 2000s. And you play with it and you practice. And then when the electric goes out in your town, you get to have lights on and nobody else does and you think you're a big shot. Now, also traveling as a nomad taught me a lot of things about sensitivities. And I don't want to get too disgusting, but one of the things I tr had trouble with was I like to have my privacy in a bathroom with the door shut and air freshener and all that stuff but you get out in the national forest and you got a privy to use i know there's family in arizona has been contacting me and i really enjoyed their emails and they're wanting to live off grid and, but they've been practicing they practice their canning techniques but the other thing is is when you get out here and something goes wrong make sure you have a car don't just say, this family that went up to the National Forest didn't have a car, but don't just say, oh, I can do it. I can live off the land. If you can't live off the land or your crop fails or your chickens die, you can go to the store and get food. You don't have to just fail to death. You can fail and, and pick yourself back up and try again. I know Carolyn and I, we go to the grocery store. We have the ability to run the freezer off solar panels, but if we couldn't, I've got two generators just go get gas I keep this job on YouTube so I can always have money in case something does go wrong I can still have electric if the well pump goes something goes wrong with the well pump that's not a big deal either I can go buy water I can again run the well pump off the generator if the solar panels don't want to pull it or I can just put in a new well pump if the well pump goes bad so you got to have backup plans and I always say you got to have multiple backup plans for everything that is critical so my water I have multiple backup plans I have the well I have the IBC tank I always carry an extra RV pump I always carry an extra well pump I've got multiple ways to run the well pump and the RV pump it's electric in case the something happens to the solar panels like I said I got two generators and that gives you time to fix whatever problems you got and the other thing is is I didn't think it was necessary to go out so far away that nobody could find us 
pretty convenient location still have the beautiful woods but we also have town not too far if I need it I didn't want to live off-grid because I don't want to pay society to take care of me it's not about getting so far away because you're scared of society stop being afraid and don't listen to the nomadic channels come out here and live it's great it's free too many people die out there in the national forest and the, and the BLMs unless you're going to be nomads and you intend to travel so if you click this up next box take to a video where you I was talking about solar panels so if I can inspire you to give it a try but don't dive all the way in without testing the waters so you can live your dreams thanks for watching